For our senior project, we wanted to do something really interesting and something that would make a difference in the world. We wanted something that had to do with renewable resources and energy. And as a team, we decided on a smart inverter. In places where there's a, a lot of renewable energy source, where there are a lot of renewable energy sources used, um, there becomes an issue because most of the solar energy that's produced is produced during non-peak hours. And then as the production of that energy ramps down, energy usage for people on the grid ramps up. So you have an issue where there's a big deficit and a large ramp rate in what power companies have to produce. So the intention of our project is to alleviate that ramp rate. And the method that we're using to alleviate that ramp rate is creating a smart system that can control the output of stored energy um, from renewable sources. So ideally, we would be able to take power from a solar panel during peak hours and output it in a controlled manner throughout a 24-hour period, where usually at those times, especially from 5 to 9 p.m., where you have uh, the maximum amount of energy usage from the grid, you will be able to output power and alleviate that ramp rate. That's the main issue and uh, is a holdup for some power companies that want to allow the usage of renewable sources. Well, our primary power is uh, based off of our DC power supply here that's feeding a DC motor. Uh, inside this DC motor there is a belt that's feeding a AC generator and the AC generator will then be feeding transformers to transform it to the 120 volts that we are actually using. Our, our generator is actually putting out 120 volts. We go through and transform it back down. And using the DC power supply, we put in a specific amount of power and we know it's isolated for our, uh, from our actual load. Well, the load bank is just a scaled down version of uh, California, basically. We got 25 three watt light bulbs. Uh, each light bulb represents 100,000 megawatts. You scale it up, you have uh, 25,000 megawatts, which would be the state of California's power demand. Uh, we've got a PLC on the underside of the board. Uh, basically, every uh, all the light bulbs are grouped into banks of either one, two, or three bulbs. They're turned on and off with an ACN relay out PLC uh, over a sequence of timers, and that just gives us the power draw that we want that uh, accurately represents the the uh, depth curve that the uh, California Independent Systems Operators uh, guys have, have put out. So we're simulating the curve. For, uh, for our grid. Um, to store the energy, we use basically a uh, the equivalent of a small car battery, 12 volt battery, and um, we output the power using your typical uh, solar inverter. And um, we've designed a pulse width modulation control system that allows us to increase or decrease the amount of power we want to apply to the grid or the amount that we want to charge from the grid based on the uh, the rate of consumption from the grid off of the power supply. So basically here on the graph we have our uh, power output that we're using with our system. The, the blue line is, is that we took our voltage times our current to get that output. Um, the red here shows the, the duct curve from 2015 that has been simulated um, and you can definitely see a lot more uh, steeper slopes, uh, greater peaks and valleys. Um, and, and our system has been designed to kind of alleviate that. And it seems to be working good. We, we still have a few improvements to make, but overall, um, I'd say it's, it's doing its job. Well, currently we have the code running on two Arduinos due to timing conflicts. I'm working on sorting that out at the moment, trying to run it onto one single Arduino Uno. Um, we have currently one Arduino which is reading a frequency measurement um, off the grid and uh, then it sends a signal to the other Arduino saying the frequency is high or low or completely out of bounds. If the frequency is completely out of bounds, the system will shut down. Uh, if the frequency is a little bit high, then the um, system will start to charge using pulse width modulation charging to a battery by turning a switch on and off. 
and then if the frequency is low, the system will discharge using an inverter from the battery. Um, and we have the inverter turning on early before we need it. As the frequency is dropping but has not gone low yet, we have the inverter turning on because inverter takes three seconds to turn on. And then we're checking after that point. If the frequency starts to rise again or never drops below a certain point, we turn the inverter back off. Otherwise, the inverter turns on and the battery charging ceases at that moment. And then the power is fed back into the system to maintain constant power. Um, well, this setup right here is um, so that we can visualize the activity of uh, the signal going into the pulse width modulation circuit. So this signal right here, right now it's at about 50% of the duty cycle. So it's uh, activating the charge circuit at 50% capacity. So we don't need to draw as much power right now. But when this becomes a horizontal line at about uh, the midway through this vertical axis, then that means we're charging at full capacity. You know, the senior project is pretty much the culmination of your entire college career. We got to, you know, make mistakes and fix our mistakes and delve into entirely new and interesting research. And I think we all felt that it was pretty much the most important thing we did in college.